Okay, now on to dinner and lunch. Uh, drinks. Already made the coffee. Right there. Then we have the chocolate drink. And this calls for 200 ml of water. And then we have the exotic drink, which calls for 500 ml of water. So, let me get started with that. And we'll give this a stir. It's kind of like stirring with a shovel. Okay, and this is not quite a 500 mil glass, so we'll just make it inside of our container. Make sure we get it all in there. Yeah, it kind of smells like mango or grapefruit kind of smell. And it has the same color as that. Slovenia ration. It smells like a mango-y peach sort of flavor. So now you're thinking, we got the drinks made. Well, not quite. Bam! Look what my bro sent me. A beer from Sweden. So I will be enjoying this with this great ration for my dinner and lunch part too. So, yeah, buddy. All right. I'm going to save these two spots for my entrees, or maybe just this spot. And I'm not going to go ahead and dump the whole contents in because it's an awful, it's an awful lot of food and I plan on eating it uh, later. Uh, so, okay, we'll start with these, what are these? Roasted and salted peanuts. Now, the one thing that really made me crack up is uh, it's made by Nutwalker. Uh... I don't know why, maybe it's because I'm juvenile in my head sometimes, but the first thing that popped in my head when I heard Nutwalker was like a porno version of Star Wars. Poor old Luke, you know? I, <laughs> I know, go figure. So, alright, it's got these nice little indentations. And they just smell like, they really don't smell roasted, but they're definitely salted peanuts. And to go along with them, we have the barbecued peanuts, also starring Nutwalker. These are like salted and barbecued. So, hmm. And I'm trying to section stuff off as, as well as I can, seeing how there are quite a few different types of things. And when they seal these, I mean, they seal them real good. I mean, some of these don't want to come out. So. Okay, then we have that beef jerky. And, of course, always got to have an oxygen absorber in there. This stuff was probably made in the States. Man, when they were talking about bites, they weren't kidding called Very Little Bites. So, hmm. And I don't know where this was. Well, maybe it was made in Sweden, so. All right, picture one of those little bites. All right. And then the whole wheat bread, which I'm assuming that that might be what that bread is for, but hmm, haven't quite seen a Bridgeford bread look like that. 
so that's interesting. And then lastly, we have the orange flavored cake. Well, it's not really lastly because I still have some gum and some other stuff. And that's kind of neat. It's wrapped up in like a baking paper. But it's all falling apart, so we're just going to leave it inside of the baking paper. Maybe we'll slide that over just a little bit. Okay, the only thing that I see left as far as chewing things are gum. So we'll open up this one, and this is xylitol gum, so it's, it's like dental gum. And of course, just like everything else, it's being ornery and doesn't want to come out of its little happy little house. So, come on you, come on you! Alright, there is that one, and I don't know... Uh, I guess it says fruit, so it is fruit flavored gum of some type. And then we have the licorice free. And I don't know why the old camera is having so many issues trying to focus today. It usually doesn't have any problems. Maybe it's just being ornery too. So there we go. I'm sure one is the freeze and one is the licorice. No surprise there. And then we've got this. I'm assuming that this goes on this cake. But we'll probably also try it on the or not the pound cake, the wheat snack bread as well. And then everybody's favorite Louisiana hot sauce. And that'll probably go on the Indian food. So, yeah, and I don't see anything else over here except for the mains. So, I will come down here to my bag of despair because I've kept these things nice and hot. So again, we've got the chicken sweet and sour pasta, which that just sounds odd all together. It's like Italian and Chinese. And then we have the chicken korma potato. So, and again, I'm just going to be putting a little bit of this stuff on here because I will be savoring these uh, a little later. So, try to open that up. Oh, wow. This is a great smell. So I know it doesn't look too hot right there, but man, the smell coming out of this thing. The smell is fabulous. So, and then of course the <laughs> chicken sweet and sour pasta. So, odd combination. And again, it looks like it's got real pieces of chicken. You can see the pasta in there as well. I want to give you guys enough. See, and you can see there's still a ton in there on both of these things. So, tons of stuff. So, man, uh, Swedish Armed Forces don't go uh, don't go hungry in the field. Okay. Now we've got the, the korma, what is that? chicken korma and potato, so we'll give this a little taste. And I really don't know, oh, there's a piece of chicken right there. So there we go, it looks good, yeah, it smells really good. Mmm, 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 mmm. I really dig Indian food. Uh, it's <laughs> it's it's one of my favorites. Mexican, in, well, heck, I got lots of favorites. But this stuff is, I would not expect to get food like that in a military ration. So, 24-hour meals. Who actually packaged this? This oh, it's a uh, Orifo from uh, Thailand. Wow. Well, I guess you guys over in Thailand really know your curry, because that's a big chunk of your, your diet, but wow, that is good stuff. 
So now if we're smart enough to cut enough off of the Louisiana hot sauce, let's put a little bit of that on there. Yeah, you like how I say a little? Yeah. That is how you eat it. And I see some people mix it in and do all that, but I like getting the I like getting the slam of that flavor, of that good hot sauce. So Yep. I'll be honest, it probably does not need the hot sauce. And that hot sauce has a nice zip to it too. So kudos for uh the Louisiana Hot Sauce Company. And, uh, oh, well, that's kind of funny. In Mayville, Wisconsin. So, rock on, guys. That, that's some nice spicy stuff. So, but yeah, uh, chicken korma potato. This stuff is good. And I started doing the happy dance. I watched, uh, Restaurant Impossible and Robert Irvine doing that. It's, so, uh, so funny. Now, this one's got me stymied. Chicken, sweet and sour, and pasta. So, you can see the good old little piece of chicken right there. So. That is, I mean, it, it I don't know how to describe that. It's almost like sacrilege, but... It's, I've never had sweet and sour sauce with pasta. Uh, it is, it is, it doesn't taste bad. It, it really doesn't. But it, if you've had sweet and sour chicken like at a Chinese restaurant, and then you've had Italian pasta, who thought that they went together? Uh, it, it does, it, it works. But just in my brain, I'm just, uh, my brain is going, what the hell over? So, hmm. I think this is a big piece of chicken right here. That's the one thing. They definitely do not skimp on the meat. So you are getting a large chunks of meat and a protein. I mean, that tastes better if you just eat it I mean, it doesn't. It does not taste bad. I mean, it, it tastes okay. It just is. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. So yeah. So we'll try some of these barbecued peanuts, and it's almost like they're like dipped in the barbecue sauce and then fried because if you if you hit them or something, it it kind of cracks off. So. Yep, that's a nice flavor. And then the roasted and salted ones. I actually prefer the roasted and the salted ones to the barbecue. But just just preference of taste. Now I should kick myself because peanuts and beer are a staple. So let me go ahead and crack open my premium Pilsner, which I am a Pilsner lager kind of guy. So, oh, that's got a nice smell. I love that bouquet. And this is 5.1% alcohol per volume. Yum. Okay, now we'll do it right. We'll take a little bit of both, shove them in the hatch, Mmm. Mm-mm-mm. That's how you eat peanuts. With beer. Alright, I'm going to try a little bit of the jerky. When I say just a little bit in that package, it came with... Let me use this arm, seeing how I can extend it. Three big square, well, three medium squares and one little itsy bitsy tiny square. So this is obviously uh, set to like a weight. So we'll give this a little 
want to try. And it's and it's good jerky too. It's 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 got a chew and it's got a lot of what's the word I'm looking for? It doesn't just crumble in your mouth. It, it gives it gives a lot of bite back. You have to to work at it to chew it. So that's that's pretty good stuff. It just needs to be like this much thicker. That'd be perfect. If these were like if these were like beef jerky cubes, wow, that would be that would be really good. All right, I've been curious about this animal the whole time. Uh, we've all seen wheat snack bread, and this is a whole wheat bread. So from Bridgeford. So it looks like it's essentially. I don't know what the a piece and a half in thickness because it's about the same length so maybe this would be good with your uh, korma and there's the dog again going upstairs to defend the house good girl so I might need <laughs> I love that dog okay we're back from guarding from the mailman or a male person I should say so all right let me just try a little bit of this korma because I know uh, bread is a good staple with Indian food and I got a bunch of hot sauce on there too so hmm that's pretty nice And the bread doesn't have the same denseness as the wheat snack bread in an MRE. It's, uh, it's a little more airy and a little more light. So you can actually see like the little air pockets and nooks and crannies in there. Maybe the thing focused all the way you could. But, hmm. That's kind of good. All right. And now the orange pound cake. And again, it's in this nice little wax paper. And we'll just try it. Oop, see, check that out. We'll just try it straight real quick. And it has like a real orangey kind of smell to it too. So that's really good. And it's really nice and smooth. So. And we'll try some of this... Uh, so it has a a tear on here and you can see this stuff's like really uh really soft it's like a frosting pretty much so place a little on here and this kind of reminds me of like the frosting tubes that i got in that australian ration So let's put some of this on here. And I'm quite sure if you were on patrol or whatever, this would be really good just to eat right out of the bag for energy. Wow, that is really good. Mm. Well, this is probably going to get consumed. I know I don't eat sweets. Is well, I do, but I don't eat a ton of them. But, wow, that's good. That orange with that chocolate. Yeah, I can see that. All right, and I've got some gum over here. I'm not going to try the gum yet. And I did forget something. I forgot that little chocolate bar. So we'll open this thing up. See what it looks like. And what a... Who makes this? Again, this is... Orifo, and where was this packaged in? This was packaged in Denmark. That's kind of... It's not... Weird. Well, I don't know. It's like three little lines, the way it's squeezed through whatever press or forming thing is. And it's kind of neat. You can see where the little knife edge chopped that. It's a little convex. And on the, on the other side... On the other side, that's pretty neat. I could just see it going down the assembly line. 
Stonk, chonk, chonk, chonk. So, all right. And this is dark chocolate, too. And I could tell you how much, but I threw the wrapper on the floor. So, well, 43% chocolate. So, hmm. To be honest, I prefer this stuff. This stuff, man. This stuff, I don't know what to call it, but that stuff is is really good. All right, it took me a while to get that down. All right, now we got the hot chocolate drake. Wow, when only putting 200 ml of water, it makes this really, really thick. So, there's the dog again. Guarding the yard from squirrels or birds or whatever. And then we have the exotic drink. Yeah, it's pretty much just like grapefruit. And from that last EPA, that German EPA that I had, I'm not a real grapefruit kind of guy. I mean, I'll eat it or drink it, but... Let me go uh, silence my guard dog real quick. Okay, again, and then we had the coffee. Each one of these meals had another packet of coffee. So, again, you could have had that as well. Or for Overwatch, and then my favorite uh, beverage. And I think the military should issue these with their rations. That would be, that'd be perfect. So, okay. I guess the last thing I'll do, I will... I will try the gum. This came out of a little yellow package, the fruit stuff. And I like the chiclets, like in MREs. These are soft. As soon as you bite into them, you can start chewing on them. They don't like crumble apart and, and all that. And then I believe this is like the ice part of the licorice and ice. Nope, that's licorice. That's licorice all day long. And then this one. They're both licorice. They're just different colors. Okay, just got a very important lesson that I just learned. Uh, I can eat licorice, but I apparently cannot eat uh, this kind of, <laughs> that kind of licorice. That, man, just kind of put me over the top. I think I'd rather take another bite out of a Civil Defense Cracker. Okay, guys. This was a review of a Swedish 24-hour ration made by 24-hour meals. Combat edition. This was menu number one. So, overall, I thought this meal was outstanding. I'm. This is a review that I've wanted to do for a while. Those of you may know that I am uh, half Swedish. My my mother's mother and father came from Sweden to the U.S., so I'm second generation American on their side. I still have family in Sweden up in the Upper Vasby area, so eventually I will get over there and meet those fine Viking warrior stock uh, brothers and sisters of mine. So again, thanks for watching, everybody, and uh. I'll see you next time. Bye.